what's going on everybody in today's video we're going to be going over the best and the worst weapons to use in season 13. with the new season came a lot of weapon changes certain weapons became floor loot again other weapons went into the replicator into the pet care package and other weapons received nerfs which i'm sure is all really confusing but today we're just going to lay all of that out and make it really simple for you before we get into that video i got two important announcements to make the two battle pass winners for season 13 are war emblem 45 and nader go ahead and dm me on twitter and we can iron out how you want to receive your battle pass the second important announcement i have to make is that i am going to go through a rebrand the name tm87 season was just a really clever idea that i used back in fortnite and since i switched apex i've been wanting to change my name and i finally found something that i really feel passionate about and that name is controversy so if you see that name on YouTube, just know that was formerly TM87, which is me, and I will soon be rebranding to Controversy. But enough of that, let's go ahead and hop right into the video, and congrats again for the Battle Pass winners. So this tier list is going to be ranked off of S through D, and I have a special section just for the guns that I believe are absolute trash. We're going to start from the worst and end up the best, so let's go ahead and get into it. Firstly, the guns that I believe are just absolute trash are the EVA 8, the P20, the RE45, and the Mozambique. It was a time when the EV8 had its glory days, but that time has since passed, and honestly, it's a really delicate gun to balance. Either the gun is too good, or it's just utter dog shit, which is what it is right now. Like, I swear, sometimes I would rather have a P20 than the EV8. The gun really just hits for no damage, and I really hate picking it up. Next, the P20 and the RE45. Honestly, the P20 is trash, but it's probably one of the better guns in this tier, along with the Mozambique. It sucks because even if you put hammer points on this gun, it's still probably would only go up to a D maybe C to your gun because it only does the extra damage when hitting them without shield. It has a very clean sight and the rate of fire is pretty good but if your opponent just has almost any other gun it just seems like the p20 really just loses all the time and my biggest problem with the re45 is really the sight and the handling for those of you who don't know when you're using the re45 it's really weird when you ads with it it's pretty much the same thing as using hip fire on top of that it has that wingman iron sight optic with the little circle and the dot in the middle and it really just makes it hard to see with this gun i don't really understand why it has that optic like that but it's whatever it does have a pretty solid Solid recoil pattern where it just moves up into the right but it's really not hard to control it's just visibility with the gun and the handling is just weird lastly the mozambique like i said is one of the better guns on this list they did actually buff it recently so where it doesn't have the limb reduction anymore even then there's just so many guns that outclass the mozambique where it just literally belongs in the trash can it's just one of those guns where you pick it up you really hate finding it now for the d tier weapons we have the bow check the 30 30 and the hemlock i'm pretty sure i'm gonna get some hate for the bow check but again this this list is just my opinion personally i just don't like picking up the bow check i feel like maybe if it had a tighter more consistent hip fire then i wouldn't mind picking it up as much but i find when someone gets really close to me i feel like i'm just fighting them with one weapon only and even when you have shatter caps on this gun it's incredibly underwhelming it just doesn't do enough damage it essentially becomes an eva 8 the 30 30 could have been so good but unfortunately the bullet drop and fighting up close with the gun is just terrible to get the most out of it, you have to charge it up, and leading your shots with the gun just never feels well. Up close, it has the same issue that the bow check has, where it just essentially becomes another EVA 8, which at that point, why not just use the EVA 8 or even the Mozambique over that? Granted, you can't use those guns at long range, and you can with a 30-30, but even then, when you're up close, it still feels like you're just fighting them with one weapon. The Hemlock has its moments, but overall, I'm just not a fan of this gun. I feel like with most battle royales, the burst guns can either be incredibly strong or just very weak. There's a very fine line that you have available when it comes to balancing burst weapons, and unfortunately the hemlock just falls on the terrible side of that. Even when fully kitted, many times it will still lose to pretty much every other rifle in the game. Now onto the C tier weapons. C tier we have the R99, the alternator, the L star, and the triple take. Now while the R99 might be one of the flashiest guns to use in the game when one macking someone, it just really isn't that great of a gun it's one of those high risk high reward guns but you do find yourself burning through ammo and reloading it incredibly often as unless you're one magging someone you're spending most of that fight reloading and even then unless you have the pay to win iron sight the gun is really bad to use i do love using me some armor at nine sometimes just to one mag someone but outside of that you probably won't find me using it now the alternate is a really weird pick due to its fire rate and its damage profile it outputs a lot of damage in each mag 
that also turns out to be its downside. Because of its fire rate, it gets outclassed by literally every other SMG in the game. So if you both are equally hitting your shots as well, you will always lose that fight. The gun comes into play and it seems like it's almost like a mini rampage. While your opponent is reloading, the alternator many times is still going to be shooting you. But due to its slow fire rate and the fact that it's outclassed by every other SMG, I just can't pick it up. The All-Star is one of those guns where it was really bad and then it was incredible and now it's just really bad again. I truly think Respawn messed up in this game by adding LMGs in the first place. They're incredibly hard to balance and due to their nature they just have so much ammo that other guns just can't compete with. So because of that, they have to nerf them in such a way so that they can be beaten by other guns. You find yourself burst firing the L-Star many times, and a lot of times you just don't have enough ammo to even continue using the gun. And if you do end up overheating, you spend a lot of time reloading now. Not to mention how much the hit fire has been nerfed. The triple take was one of those guns that was a problem last season. It was just really annoying going up against. Now since the balance changes that they've made to it, it really just feels like an incredibly underwhelming gun. It does have its moments where you can use it up close and take advantage of its hit fire but honestly long range it just really isn't that effective i would much rather use a rifle or any of the other marksman rifles and not to mention energy ammo just seems very scarce this season on to the b tier weapons we're going to start it off with the r301 and i'm sure i'll get some hate for that one the r301 is just a tried and true cookie cutter rifle but due to its ease of use they just can't make it any stronger and they also just can't nerf it either because then it just won't be viable at all it's a very simplistic gun but anyone that has better aim with you with the other rifles will generally beat you in that firefight not to mention the hit fire isn't really the best it actually is probably the worst out of the other two rifles but it does have a very clean iron sight and it is incredibly easy to use so that's why it's b tier for me and the prowler at one point was just incredibly strong to use there's a time where people were complaining about prowler on controller and even snipe down had something to say about it but honestly, the Prowler has really kind of flown under the radar now. Not many people pick it up anymore. And I think that's largely just because there is a better SMG to use. The Prowler still does have incredible burst potential and its hit fire is pretty good. It's just when it comes to consistency, it just can't beat the king of SMGs right now. Next for the Devotion and the Rampage, I'm going to hit them both at the same time. As I stated earlier, LMGs are just really hard to balance in this game. And again, because of that, both of these guns received plenty of nerfs. The reload speed, the swap speed, and the damage were all just nerfed on these guns. If it wasn't for its high ammo capacity, then I would honestly have it lower on this list. And even then, the recoil control in this gun is very wonky. But when hitting your shots, this gun can melt you instantly. It kills incredibly fast, even when you don't have a turbocharger. But unfortunately, it just takes more time to do that. And for the Rampage, it's really just gone under the radar since it's hit the, into the Replicator. On top of that, the Spitfire is ground loot now, so most people just aren't wasting their time with the Rampage when they can just pick up a better LMG. Now on to the A-tier weapons. Surprisingly enough, the Havoc actually got a slight buff with this season. Honestly, for the life of me, I can't figure out why they did it, but they did reduce the initial recoil for the Havoc, which does make it a little bit easier to use at the beginning of its recoil control, but I never really had a problem with it in the first place. But the Havoc absolutely melts. And I think with the purple mag, it has upwards towards 36 ammo. If you add that to the fact of its high fire rate and high damage, this gun is an absolute bean. If you're good at controlling recoil, I highly suggest you use the turbocharged havoc and even if you don't have the turbocharger it's still an incredibly strong weapon to use but if you notice the turbocharger in the replicator and you have a havoc definitely go out of your way to craft that you'll find yourself winning a lot more fights using guns that are a lot more viable like the havoc Next, we're going to talk about the king of SMGs, the CAR SMG. The CAR is the best ground loot SMG that you can possibly pick up. Its recoil control is excellent, its damage profile and rate of fire are incredibly good, and its ammo capacity is just great. And honestly, its iron sights really aren't that bad. But having a fully kitted CAR SMG literally just stomps every other SMG in the game. On top of that, this gun is incredibly good at mid-range. This is where I think the R99 fails. The ability to control the R99's recoil from mid-range versus the car smg is like night and day on top of that the car smg kills faster i know a lot of people have really slept on this smg as i've seen in my tiktok comments but this is certainly a gun you need to be using in order to win more fights before they buffed the g7 scout i honestly would not have put it at a tier but i do find that the buff they gave it was pretty substantial for those of you who don't know they reduced the timing between each burst for the g7 scout while using the double tap and I find myself beaming people a lot more with it. 
I don't always pick it up, but when I do, I do find it pretty enjoyable to use. Its high headshot multiplier makes the gun also incredibly deadly when hitting headshots. It doesn't have the fastest TTK, but it is a very reliable marksman rifle. Next, we're going to talk about the longbow and the sentinel together. The longbow is honestly just an incredibly annoying gun to go up against. Getting hit for a constant 55 damage with a sniper optic is so annoying. But because of that is why it's an A tier. The gun is so powerful. And given the fire rate being better than the sentinel, I believe it also has a higher time to kill on it as well even though the sentinel does more damage i also don't find myself completely out of the fight when someone gets too close to me when i have a longbow as they have fire whereas it's not excellent it also isn't too bad and the sentinel that thing just hits really hard the sentinel is much better at taking someone out of the fight in order to make them heal because of this when you have a charged up sentinel it can be a lot easier to push a team after being hit by one the gun is incredibly rewarding and its ability to just force someone out out of a fight or to back up is just too strong to not can be considered a tier lastly we're going to talk about the s tier guns and these are the best of the best in the game you should be picking these up first of all my favorite the flatline this is the king of rifles right now it is the best rifle in the game to be picking up tie damage profile it's not really that hard to use as people think it is and its hit fire is literally unmatched by any other rifle and that's without even considering its high ammo capacity. I know for some this gun can be considered really hard to use, but I really suggest that you go in the firing range and learn how to master this rifle as it is now on the ground loot again and it is the best rifle to be using. Next we're going to be talking about the Peacekeeper. The Peacekeeper was already incredibly strong and they just received a buffed this season. As I said earlier, they removed the limb damage from this gun as well as the Mozambique. So now you should be hitting even more consistent shots as they already had buffed it before which made the pellet size larger. When fighting up close with this gun, hitting 199 just feels incredibly devastating, especially when you have a purple bolt to follow up with another shot. Not many guns can solo clutch a 1v3 situation with just by itself, unlike the Peacekeeper can. And now obviously we also have the Mastiff. The Mastiff is back in the care package and it hits for huge damage. It hits a max of 144 to the head and I believe a max of 120 to the body. This gun can easily two shot you and take you out of the fight instantly. It may only have an ammo capacity of four shells but now it has dual shells so it re reloads even faster. It's definitely something I would take over the Peacekeeper. The ability to just knock someone instantly and then reload and having its fast fire rate with the bolt on it just just makes this gun too hard to pass up. Next for the Kraber, even though it did receive a nerf, it still is an S tier weapon. Honestly, I think a lot of people just overreacted with this nerf. As a gun still can one shot, it just doesn't do it all the time. And even then, randomly getting hit for 140 damage is still incredibly strong and a lot of times can knock somebody. Just don't think the nerf that it received was substantial enough in order to take it out of being literally the best sniper in the game. And on to my most hated gun in this game, the Wingman. Honestly, I hate this gun so much. It's like a walking DMR from all ranges with a faster fire rate. The ability to just spam this gun from range and just hit maybe lucky headshots or even a few body shots is just so strong. And even from mid range, catching one headshot immediately takes you out of the fight and normally they just push you. I personally just cannot stand this gun, but I do recognize that it is an S tier weapon. I know some people put this down at B tier, but then they complain about it. I think if you're going to complain about a gun, the gun has got to be S tier. And yes, I do recognize that the wingman does take skill to use. The point is, once you do have that skill, the gun becomes very overwhelming. Now onto the Spitfire. I honestly don't know what the devs were thinking by putting this gun on ground loot. Yes, it did receive a substantial amount of nerfs, but the gun is still noticeably strong. To be honest, it doesn't even feel like the nerfs exist. Removing the barrel did nothing. Upping the ammo capacity by five did nothing. Changing the weapon swap suite doesn't matter when they can just fire at you for an infinite amount of ammo. And the hit fire when close range literally doesn't matter either. Again, this is one of those guns where if you're going to complain about it, you've got it's got to be an S tier gun. I personally just don't believe LMGs belong in the game, but due to Rampart, they have to. I kind of wish that Respawn would find a way to fix the LMG issue. Honestly, if it were up to me, I would just remove all attachments from LMGs and only allow optics. But I don't work for Respawn, so I digress. The Vault SMG really doesn't need that much explanation. It's a care package gun and it's literally the best SMG. The reason why I say the car is the king of SMGs is simply for the fact that it's ground loot. But you and all of us know that the Volt is literally untouchable and it's high ammo capacity with a really good headshot multiplier. It's just literally never worth not picking up this gun. And for our last weapon, we have the charge rifle. This gun is just so 
fucking annoying. There's nothing like fighting somebody and getting third partied by some charged rifle Timmy sitting from 200 meters away. The fact that you don't need to lead the shots, it is pretty much hit scan and causes you to slow down while being shot, making it easier to hit you with the final shot of the charge. Honestly, it's the least skillful sniper in the game. Like this gun just isn't hard to use at all. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if it needs a nerf or not, but I just know that it's just really annoying and it is incredibly powerful as a sniper. People will literally take a charge rifle, farm their armor to red, and then drop their armor and swap their teammates so they can re-farm their armor to red. There aren't many other guns in the game that people do that with, but there's my tier list. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you would change anything or if I put something in the wrong position. If you found this video helpful or you just simply enjoy it, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you want to come back and see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video and I'll see you guys in the next one.